Welcome to Uncovered. What's your question? Yeah, I'm just having some problems with my... I've been married for about 15 years Mm -hmm. uh, in February. And uh, here recently, my wife caught me in a couple of lies, and she declared herself un- unmarried. And, mm. and like the next week, she she took off two times. Well, when she declared herself unmarried, she told me she don't want, want me to ask her any questions from now on. And then the next week, she just took off two times in the morning. Mm. And then I found out later that she was going over to another you know, another person or an, two other people's house to do BDSM and uh-huh. it's, it's not something I'm like really into and uh but I'm, I've, I've the more I read I've been reading about it and the more I read about it the more I hurt because this is like a, a strong bond that she was creating with someone besides me yeah and I just I just really don't know what to do right now is she she's mad at me, she's mad at me because I can't I won't I don't want her to can you can you do this without me but now that I've read I know there's no place for me in this kind of relationship yeah and, uh, is she a submissive I'm mad at her. yes yeah okay. yes, I, yes she is and you're mad at her for what what did you lie about what did what did she catch you in lies about Oh, I had substance. I've had substance abuse abuse issues in the past, and okay. she caught me trying to go smoke some weed with a buddy of mine, and caught me drinking a beer. And okay, so she's yeah, using this as an excuse to go and uh, engage. She wants to. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so there's two things going on, right? Or well, three things. One is your <laughs> sobriety. The yeah. other is her. Your relationship with her. And the third is the interaction between those two things. Right. Okay. You understand what I mean by that third thing? Because what's going to happen is you're going to want to do drugs even more now. Because you're upset, right? My guess is you've already done it. Oh, I'm so really depressed right now. Yeah. 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 So. She's mad at me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm you're hard, and you're being. Yeah. And you're getting all stuck in this cycle. OK. So here's the thing. There's a couple of things. You know, you need some help making sense of all the moving parts thing happening here. Right. So we have your the addiction piece and the impact that that has on your relationship and on your life. Right. And. Inherent in the addiction piece is the inability to be with one's feelings. We don't get addicted to substances or behaviors except when we need those things in order not to feel what we don't want to feel, right? So that's what you're even noticing now, that you want to use even more when you're upset, hurt, depressed, angry, because you don't know how to be with those feelings. And so you want to numb out and not feel. And that's where the addiction comes in, right? So... So there's deep. So so let me unpack this for you. There are deeper issues in your life, which you probably already know about trauma, uh, emotional abuse and neglect, maybe even some physical abuse. I'm feeling um, in your history where that are you came to the table of this relationship already feeling, you know, sort of in this uncertain place about your worthiness of love. And your ability to really be loved in the way you deserve. And then you get involved with a woman who um, is playing uh, power games and mind games with you, not just with the BDSM, but with the manipulation. So, like, that's a gaslight. Now, I understand she's mad at you because you went to try to use and she feels betrayed. Right. Just like everyone who loves an addict feels betrayed when they go and try to use after promising to be sober and being sober. That feels like a huge betrayal and they feel hopeless and scared. Right. We can understand that about her. But that doesn't justify her then using that to go out and cheat. Right. But what you're kind of saying is that she has a fetish for BDSM. That's uh, bondage, dominance, uh submission and masochism right so she has a fetish for that which can be like an addiction herself it's it's but it doesn't act in the same way as your addiction does so it's a deep need it's the only way that she can necessarily if she's a true submissive it's the only way she can really feel safe in a relationship and if she's feeling betrayed by you then sure i understand how she's even more going to want to go be the slave for someone else right for her master like i get the need to go 
psychologically understanding what I do about submissives, why they would rush to their master's arms when anytime they're triggered to fear, right? And you wanting to use again would trigger her to fear. But that doesn't mean it's your fault that she goes and does that, right? You understand that? That, you know, you're not making her do that. And that's the game that gaslighters play, right? It's your fault I hit you. It's your fault I cheated on you. It's your fault I got drunk, right? None of those statements could ever be true unless you're literally pouring the alcohol or substance down that person's throat or dragging them to someone else's house to cheat with, right? Right. But you can't make anyone do that. So sh- that's her 100%. I mean, she has many 100%, but that's her piece in this puzzle is that she's putting you in a bind now where not only is she be- mad at you for what you've done, but now she's betraying you and blaming you for her betrayal. And that's not yes. okay. Okay, so that's another. Make- Go ahead. She tried to make it okay by saying I could go do the same thing, and I was like, I don't want anybody else. Yeah, well, no, that's she broke your agreement, right? You had an agreement for monogamy. And so now she's changed the agreement and saying, sorry, I'm not going to be monogamous. I'm going to go and bond really deeply over here. Um, And, yeah, go ahead. Feel free to do the same thing, but I'm changing the agreement. If changing that agreement is not okay with you, then it's not okay with you. And so you're right to be angry. You're right to feel hurt. You're right to feel scared. The most important thing is that you don't fall into a pit of using now because that's your only strategy for feeling better. And so I'm really glad you called because the truth is you need more support than probably an AA or NA meeting. Do you have a therapist? I do, but I haven't been to see him in a while. Well, it was more like it was state run. It was more like uh, monitoring me than really giving uh, me any therapy. Okay. And well, I don't know if I could really open up to anybody about this, <laughs> except for on the phone, you know. Why I'm not? not do it face to face. I just, I just, I have trouble expressing my feelings. I, I think you're pretty good at it. Well, do you have a commute? Do you have? Do you go to AA or NA? I probably need codependent because, well, about five, five to six years ago, I was in a bad wreck and I fought for three or four years to get disability and she was uh she was uh um, running the house um paying all the bills but last may i well, well last i got denied the disability and last may i started working at walmart and since i've been working she she's not helped me started helping me out around the house or anything you know i still do 90 95 percent yeah. of the house working so yeah it sounds work. like you're in a bit of an abusive relationship and she needs to be submissive and she's angry about that and she and you're not a good match for her if she really fundamentally needs that you're not unless you want to be a master you know you're not gonna make her happy and she's not gonna be happy with you and she's not gonna make you happy and you deserve to be with someone who you can fully satisfy just by being yourself. And being a master, you know, for a submissive or a dominant for a submissive is, you know, a very specific kind of personality. And, um, you know, I couldn't do it, uh, even if I wanted to. And there's a part of me that would like to be able to be that way. But I couldn't do it. And I'm not saying you need to do it, right? If that's not you, then that's not you. But my guess is you're all tangled up in a enmeshed relationship with someone who really doesn't honor you in the way you deserve. And you are sliding back into substance use. And I don't want either of those things to happen for you. So even if it's going to more Al-Anon codependent group, using group, you know, groups for nar- uh, for Narcotics Anonymous or Alcoholics Anonymous, getting with a sponsor, getting to know someone, the more that you get comfortable talking about this stuff out loud, even if it's calling here and making a confession, the better, because you will realize that there's nothing to be ab- uh, embarrassed about. You know, millions of other people are struggling with the same things you are. When you share your story and get the help you're getting, you're getting it for yourself and for all of them. And the more that you speak it out into the light, 
bringing the darkness into the light, the shame evaporates, right? Like listening to me tell you that it is not your fault. And here I am, a clinician who works with all sorts of people with all sorts of fetishes and addictions and everything else, telling you that it you it is not your fault. You are not to blame for your partner going to be with you know her her dominant right it is not your fault there's no amount of drugs you could have done or anything else you could have done to make that your fault you might have ended up being a catalyst or an inspiration for her but she would have found inspiration somewhere else if she didn't find it in that situation right but speaking that out can you feel the shame around that specific thing evaporate a little bit yeah i do Okay, so do she you... Said she reads uh, trashy romance novels all the time. That's all she does is sit there and stare at her phone and looks at Facebook or, or I guess, the Fifty Shades of Grey syndrome yes, or whatever. Yes, yes. So you're not going to uh, make her happy there, and that's okay, and that's going to be a process of grief and letting go for you. But the most important thing is that you get support. And so if there's nothing else that I can pound into your head over the course of this conversation tonight, it's that... I want you to get braver than you've ever been and talk to someone about this because I swear to you they've heard it all before. And when you speak it out and get the reality testing that you need, the reality check that you need, like the one I just gave you about that one thing, you will find it easier and easier to speak your truth and you will realize that that's where the true peace can be found, hiding in the shadows, feeling too ashamed to talk about it, you know, feeling too ashamed to get help, being one of those people that quote unquote doesn't talk about their feelings. That's just a defense. Right. And it's not real. It's really just based on fear of being judged or fear that you're going to be less than. And the opposite is true. The opposite is true. When you bring those things into the light, they no longer have the hold on you. That which you cannot be with will run your life. And you're already finding that. Okay. So please, 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 will you look into that for me? Even if it's not the guy you used to go to, will you check that out? Yes, I will. All right. You know we're cheering you on, and you call back here anytime if you want to talk. We're here for you at 855-5-UNCOVER. 855-5-UNCOVER. 